Hey guys, I'm blessed out of here with a new review. This time we got The Walking Dead Season 3 Episode 2. And this episode is actually titled Sick. And uh, what an awesome name for a really great episode. And you can see why this episode's named Sick after we go through this for a while. But before we get started here, I just want to let you guys know that this review does contain spoilers. So if you haven't seen the episode, I recommend you go watch it, come back, and we can talk about it. So uh, let's get right into this. I was a little angry to find out that this episode doesn't contain any Andrea or Michonne in it, which I found kind of weird. But it almost looks like they're going to switch between episodes now, that uh, one episode will focus on the prisoners, Rick, them. Then it'll switch back to Michonne and Andrea and them going into Woodbury and with the governor. So that's where I think this is going here. But other than that, there was nothing, not even a little bit. Only time that we've seen Michonne and Andrea... Andrea was uh, at the end in the preview for the next episode, so I don't know. And again, they keep on showing the governor in the end of every preview of every episode, and we haven't seen him yet. But I'm surprised that uh, the governor is going to have a big role in this in this season, because I would assume that he would just show up near the end, like they would end this season at like, a big cliffhanger with the governor, but it doesn't look like they're going to do that. Um, but uh, this episode is really about... Rick, and he's really uh, changing into comic book Rick. He's becoming a lot more harsh, a lot more cold-hearted, and this episode really shows that. But let's start off with this episode. Started off with Herschel being dragged out of where he was because obviously he got his leg cut off, and they brought him into one of the cells. He's laying on the bed, and they're just trying to help him and stuff. And later on in the episode, um, Carl actually plays a big role, and he gets a lot of medical supplies, and he brings it to Herschel and. Lori's like, where'd you get that? And he's like, oh, I went off my own, killed some zombies, got all this stuff. And his mom's like, what? So, again, Carl is turning into comic book Carl, too, in this episode. Uh, Rick and uh, Carl really have are developing to be more harsh, more cold-hearted, uh, just like they are in the comic book. In the comic book, they're very cold-hearted, very harsh. And, again, in this episode, you're starting to see that that's where they're going with this. They're turning into the same thing. Um, but uh, one thing I was kind of found awkward was that at the end of season one, uh, end of season one, at the end of the first episode, um, you, there was a zombie b uh, banging at the door, and so it was kind of like tense because cut off the leg, prisoners shown up, some the zombies at the door. So and they open the door, and T Dog takes care of this zombie that was there that was banging at the door, but it was only one zombie. And I don't know from the from last week's episode. I assumed that there was like a herd of zombies there, and that's why they're all like hurrying and stuff. But no, it was just one zombie there. So that was kind of a letdown in a way. But I guess it doesn't really matter because you know it doesn't make or break the show. But of course now they have to deal with these prisoners that are here, which I found pretty cool that because the prisoners in the in the show. Some of them match the prisoners in the comic book, and they actually have the same names. Um, Axel is in it. Um, there's a guy named Big Tiny, which I find hilarious. Uh, there's a guy named Thomas, which we'll get to. He's, uh, like, the main guy with the gun. Um, there's Andrew, and there's Oscar. So, those are all the prisoners. Those are the names. Uh, one thing I found kind of weird, too, is that they don't really say the prisoners' names. It's really hidden, and you really have to look for their names, or you can just you Google search them. But, uh, I kind of knew most of their names already because of the comic book, like I said, but... Yeah, it's, I kind of found it kind of interesting that they would bring him in at this point. And really, this episode moved along really quick. Um, I thought this this season was basically just going to be them dealing with the prisoners. But really, it, this episode was them dealing with the prisoners. Pretty much, they're done with the prisoners now at the end of this episode. Um, but right off the bat, you can tell that one of the prisoners, his name is Thomas, uh, you can tell that he's different from the rest. He's... He's more stupid in a way, almost. You really start to hate him, almost. But you can tell he's the only really bad one. Everyone else seems okay. They don't seem evil. They don't seem bad. They just kind of seem misguided a little bit. But they seem like good people. So uh, this guy named Thomas is the only one that really is bad, that seems bad. But uh, moving on. Daryl actually, uh, he has his crossbow right up to the door, waiting for the prisoners to come out. And I just thought that was really cool. You can see that Daryl's really thinking for the group now. He's really tough in a way. He's always been tough in the show, but you can see he's really smart. All the other people just rushed to Herschel, tried to help him. 
He was the only one thinking about the group in general. With these prisoners, he's worrying. He has his crossbow right at the door waiting for them to come out. And of course, now they have to deal with these prisoners. What are they going to do? Well, Rick kind of goes to Lori and talks to her for a little. And he, like, he asks her, like, what's her, your opinion on this, basically? Kind of what he almost did with Shane. Uh, Lori went to, but Lori went to Rick. Uh, Rick didn't go to Lori. And basically, Lori says the same thing he did for Shane. He basically said, Lori basically says, just do what you gotta do. If you have to kill him, that's what it comes to. And really, I'm thinking, this already happened. This, this is what happened with Shane. I mean, is she gonna get all upset when Rick kills him? Because, obviously, Rick's gonna kill at least one of them. One of them's gonna die this episode. You knew that. But, like, I, you know, Lori really bugs me most of the time. Um, just her character in general does. I kind of hate her more in the show, too, in the comics. She seems worse in the show. But, like, I'm picturing, like, what happened to Shane, too. Rick's gonna kill one of these guys. She's gonna start getting angry at him again, just like she did with Shane. But, uh, yeah, that was basically Lori's opinion on these prisoners. But then we find out that there's actually tons of food in this prison, in the cafeteria. That's what these prisoners have been living off. That's why they're still alive. They were locked in the cafeteria. A guard locked them in the cafeteria. Gave one of the guys, Thomas, a gun. Said, I'll be right back. Never came back. Um, and the prisoners don't actually know really how bad the zombie apocalypse is. They know that there's, a, like, a disease that's causing people to turn into, like, zombie-ish walkers, you know. But uh, they don't know how bad. Uh, Rick kind of says, like, kind of breaks it down to them and tells them what's how bad it is. And they're like, oh, can we call our family then? We gotta let them know. But, like, see, they didn't really understand that everything's gone. So now that they broke it to them, you can kind of see that they, they kind of broke as people almost. But, uh, you know, they make a deal that they help them clear out a cell, like a uh, like cell block, like see how they have a whole section there. Rick, Rick, Daryl, and T Dog would help them clear out their own. They stay there. He stays there. And Rick kind of, uh, they were looking at each other. Thomas and Rick, they're staring at each other. And he's like, and Rick's like, if I ever see you come here, if I ever smell you, I was like, what smell? But whatever. <laughs> if I ever see you around here, if, if, anywhere around my people, I'll kill you. And, like, that's when I knew it was serious. And, again, this is comic book Rick coming out here. Like, after he kills Shane, like, it feel, he feels like, well, I guess I can kill anyone now, really. Um, I think with Rick, it's really, he doesn't want to kill people, but if you give him the means to, if, the, he, if there's a chance to, if there's a reasonable chance to kill them, like, if he can, in his own mind, justify killing them, he will. And that's really what where comic book Rick is right now, too. Um, but, uh, one thing I found really smart was when they brought Herschel into their cell to, and they, they put him on the bed, they cuffed him to the bed because, well, he might turn into a walker, he might not make it, they cuffed him to the bed just in case. Um, even though he does only have one old leg, but, like, in the first season, there was a zombie walking around with just half a body, so, well, not walking around, but it was going around. But, uh, so there was, like, really an emotional moment here with Maggie and Herschel. Of course, Herschel's knocked out right now. Um, he, he, you know, he's out from all the blood that he's lost. But Maggie kind of just sits down and kind of talks to herself almost because obviously Herschel can't really hear him. But she kind of just like accepts that, you know what, Dad, if you have to die, die. Like there's nothing much we can do. Just kind of just end your suffering. Blah blah blah. But Beth doesn't feel this way. Beth wants him to live. She wants to do everything she can to save him. So we got the devil and angel here, uh, to, so to say. Uh, one's kind of accepted Herschel's fate, Maggie, and then Beth's kind of like, no, he has to live. So, I kind of agree with Maggie, though, like, you know, they've done what, everything they can. Even if Herschel does live, how is he going to live with just one leg? And, of course, uh, uh, Dale in the comics had this happen to him, and he kind of had a peg leg for a while. And I th that, that could work with Herschel, too. But, um... Yeah, like, like, even right there at that moment, though, I thought for sure Herschel was gonna, uh, turn into a zombie, because, like, Maggie was so close to him, I thought he was just gonna go, like, mm, and just bite Maggie right in the face, but he doesn't, um, even at the, um, so yeah, but, uh, I thought for sure Herschel was gonna die, but he didn't, and I was really surprised about that, but, oh well, uh, a um, really funny part of this episode was that, uh, the prisoners, um, they're, like, the prisoners had to learn how to kill zombies because they didn't know. So, uh, Rick, Daryl, and T-Dog helped them clear their cell. 
and he they basically say right away, you know, you have to hit them in the head. No guns, tracks more of them. Hit them in the head. Uh, that's the only way to take them out. And they're like, okay, okay. So they all go, and it was so funny. They all go and just like jail style attack zombies. They're holding their arms back, and Axel has like um, uh, brass knuckles hitting a guy, one zombie in the stomach, and I just thought, like, what's going on here, like, they're, they don't know at all, like, this is like a, <laughs> a prison fight here, not a zombie fight, it was, it was really funny, uh, but, you know, they're just, like, stomping on the zombies on the ground, it was, it was just hilarious, um, but at this point, um, Big Tiny, which is one of the prisoners, he, uh, he goes up, to, he, he, like, he seems kind of afraid of all this killing, and he kind of backs up in the corner, because he's a little bit afraid, you know, whatever, and the most disgusting part of this episode, it almost seems like every episode now, so far, first and second, have really one disgusting moment, in the first episode, Rick took off that, one of the guy's helmets, the zombie's helmets, and his face, like, peeled off, this one, this was that moment, that disgusting moment, um, there's a zombie, he was cuffed, he was obviously a prisoner in the prison, but he was a zombie, his hands were cuffed, and he, like, rips his hand off to get his arm out of the cuff, and his arm, like, his hand, like, rips off, there's, like, blood and stuff going everywhere, and his hand just, like, disintegrates off, it was the most disgusting thing in the whole episode, and, uh, he goes after Big Tiny, and scratches Big Tiny, and then, of course, Thomas, this insane prisoner guy shoots starts shooting with his gun that he has a zombie that scratched big tiny so now this comes to a point where they're like okay what do we do with big tiny uh, he got scratched and you know the other prisoners want to save him especially axel axel's kind of his one his friend basically and he's like okay well let's put him in a cell we can he, you know even if he does turn he can be in the cell and he won't hurt no one uh, but rick's like uh, how am i supposed to do this i can't cut off your arm like uh, herschel like because it, it was like on his almost his shoulder, so that really wouldn't work, because you'd be cutting so much stuff right there, he'd bleed out for sure, um, but, so they didn't know what to do, and then Thomas, the guy with the gun, the prisoner with the gun, he starts, he just whacks Big Tiny right in the head, Big Tiny falls on the floor, and he starts wailing on him, on his head, and at one point they show, they don't really show, but they, it's in the background, they show Big Tiny's head, and it's like just mush, and, like, he just looks at Rick, almost like, you're next, buddy. And Rick's just like, oh. So, like, it was, you know, this guy, Thomas, just kills Big Tiny right away. Doesn't even think about it. Done. So, you can tell, again, at the beginning of this episode, I got a bad vibe on this guy. Now, I know for sure this guy is insane. So, like, that's what I was thinking right there. So, that, so then, um, they're clearing out this little part, too. And there's these two doors that they have to open to clear out some more zombies for the prisoners, for their cell. Thomas goes up and he accidentally opens up both doors and a bunch of zombies comes out. So, every, like, tons of zombies come out. So they start killing them, you know, all of the prisoners and everyone. And he, um, Thomas swings, I think it was a, a hammer, if I'm not mistaken. It might have been a machete. He swings it and he hits a zombie, headshots him, and he, like, goes too far. But he does this on purpose, obviously. And it goes right by Rick's head. Rick dodges, almost killing Rick. And, you know, Thomas is just looking at him like, uh. Then Thomas grabs a zombie, pushes him right on Rick, and they both fall on the ground. And, uh, again, he's trying to kill Rick here. Thomas is trying to kill Rick. He's trying to take out their leader. He, obviously, he wants to be the, the leader around here now. But, um, so, uh, Daryl comes out around, stabs the zombie that's on top of Rick right in the head with an arrow. Really nice moment. And Rick gets up, and he looks at, uh, Thomas. He's like, what just happened? He's like... Oh, you know, whatever, he's trying to make excuses. And they kind of just stare at each other for a second, just silence. And Rick grabs his machete, slices Thomas right in the head. That was the best moment in this episode by far. Because for me, honestly, I hated this guy right from the beginning. I knew something was up with this guy. I knew he he wasn't up all there. He, something was wrong with him. I could tell he was evil in a way. And so you kind of anticipated him getting what he deserved, and this was it. Rick kills him right on the spot. When that happens, well, another prisoner, his name was Andrew, if I'm not mistaken. He runs away kind of in fear, and uh, Rick chases after him right away. And I mean, why didn't Rick just let him run? You know, there's zombies everywhere. He could have died. But, you know, you don't know what could happen. I'm sure this prisoner knows 
wears everything in the prison in a way. He kind of knows around the prison, so I'm sure he can go somewhere and get a gun and come back and take revenge on these people. But, um, of course, Rick runs after him, and uh, he runs right into a dead end, like a courtyard, um, this prisoner named Andrew. And uh, so he runs in, and there's zombies all in his courtyard. It's It's a dead end. And Rick comes on, and he just closes the door on him. It's like a gate, so he can still see. And he's like, you better run. And he, so he kind of just lets him die. Um, you know, it really wasn't Rick that killed him, but you can still say that Rick killed a Andrew because uh, his actions really determined if he would live or die. So again, Rick turning into comic book Rick. Both, he killed two prisoners in this episode, Thomas and Andrew. And again, he's becoming more harsh. In the first season, in the second season, he really didn't want to kill any living. Like he, he did everything he could not to. This episode, he's he's becoming more and more harsh, more heartless, and you can really see in this episode how he's changing. Um, you know, I really didn't want to see Big Tiny die too. I didn't touch up on that, but Big Tiny seemed like a cool guy. I mean, wh why did he have to die, man? Um, and uh, again, another really important thing in this episode was that. Lori actually did something useful <laughs> for the first time in the whole show. Um, she actually saved Herschel. She did a uh, mouth-to-mouth to him and actually saved his life in the middle of the episode. Good job, Lori. <laughs> round of applause. Round of applause for Lori. Uh, finally doing something good. But, um, yeah. So that's, like, basically the only thing she did in this episode. But, oh, well. Uh, then Rick came back, and he kind of... Oscar and Axel were the only prisoners left at this point. And they kind of he kind of gives them a chance to plead for themselves, tell him why they should he should let them live. Axel begs for his life straight up, and I love Axel, such a good character in the comic book, and I really wanted him to live because in the comic book he's a really nice guy actually, and uh, in the comic book he dies too soon, but in my opinion, but I'd really like to see him his character develop a lot more. So um, and so he begs for his life, and Rick kind of okay he can live. And then they, they go to Oscar, and Oscar's like, I've never begged in my life before. I've never pleaded in my life before. I'm not going to start now. He's like, do what you got to do, man. And Rick lets him live, which I found really surprising. I thought he was going to kill him right on the spot for saying that. But Rick let him live. Uh, so a kind of good thing. And they put their the two last prisoners like kind of in their own block and, like, you know, let them go kind of in a way. And uh, T-Dog kind of talked to them for a while and gave them advice, which I found kind of weird. Yeah, T Dog doesn't really have a huge part in the show, but I think he's essential to the show. Really like his character, and it's, he's really more of a background character, but I think a really great background character. And he kind of gives advice to them. It's kind of funny in a way. Uh, but and it's also revealed that Herschel doesn't have a fever, uh, so that's kind of a good thing. So you know he didn't turn. So obviously he's not a zombie. Uh, he's okay for now. There's this one moment where Rick goes up to Herschel, and they kind of like hold hands. He's like, "Yeah, man, we got it," but. I don't know, this whole episode, it wasn't really clear if Herschel was alive or dead. And uh, they didn't really say it straight out until really the end. So, and I thought he, I, at one moment in the show, I thought he was dead and turned into a walker. But he was just kind of like druzy because he was like just waking up. Um, but uh, uh, near, and uh, one other thing that happened was Carol has decided that she is going to start... Uh, like experimenting on zombies no not experimenting but she's practicing uh doing a c-section on zombies in preparation for lori giving birth which i th thought was disgusting and good thing they didn't show it or else it probably would have threw up but uh <laughs> but um so she she was started doing that and at that moment uh this is near the end by the way um she's doing it out in the open like outside in the kind of courtyard area where it's fenced in in the prison and you you the camera is basically in bushes outside moving around and so someone's watching uh, carol while she's doing this so that's kind of probably going to lead into the next episode um but near like right at the end uh it's Lori and rick talking and Lori kind of opens up to rick for the first time in a while and kind of just wants to talk about their marriage and, and everything like that and kind of see where they're standing right now but uh, again this is Rick turning into comic book Rick he's, uh, he's really heartless and harsh and basically says kind of brushes her off and just like good job saving uh, Herschel today and kind of just leaves doesn't talk about anything else so that's like a big thing like um, Rick's really really harsh and I like that that he is turning into comic book Rick. Um, and I think they can go really far with this. I don't know if he he will turn back to normal Rick. I don't think he will because 
once he goes into killing, this killing mode that he is right now, it's really hard to get out, and even in the comics you can see that too. So I thought this was a great episode overall, that's it for this episode, but uh, tune in next time for ne uh, next week's episode, I'll be doing another review. I usually have them the next day, I'll have a review up, it's as, probably as fast as I can get them up since I have school, but... Uh, thanks guys for watching, and just before I go, I just want to let you guys know that I actually do a podcast with uh, two other really cool guys, and uh, we uh, review comic books, action figures, TV sh shows, movies, Transformers, video games, we cover everything, I think you guys would really like it, so if you want to go check it out, it's called the Lost Bros Podcast, it's on iTunes and Podomatic, so go check that guys. Go check that out, guys. Uh, we just put up a new episode, and we actually have a Brotherhood Review Night where we get a bunch of guys, and we do a review on movies or TV shows, and we actually reviewed this episode of The Walking Dead. So if you want to see an opinion of a bunch of people about this episode, go check that out at The Lost Bros on Podomatic and iTunes. So thanks, guys, for watching. Stay tuned for more reviews and news, and uh, thanks. I uh, just want to say thanks for watching, and see you later, guys.